Welcome to the Roundhouse, the heart of the National Narrow Gauge Museum. And behind me, you can see some of the fine locomotives that make up this world-renowned collection. There are engines here built by a variety of manufacturers from all across the globe. Engines that help tell the story of the steam locomotive, how it developed and the different tasks that it was created to perform. So with that, let's go and have a look at some of the key items in the collection. This here is Tranquil No. 4, and it is arguably the most important locomotive in the entire collection, because this was the first engine that was owned by the founder of the Stadtfold Barn Railway. And quite interestingly, this one is the last locomotive that was commercially built in the UK, being built in 1971, and for a steam engine, that's really, really late. Of equal importance is Fiji behind me, named where it used to work. And this helps to show the story of the British built steam engine being built over here and shipped out to work in the sugarcane fields. This machine, quite interestingly, is a steam engine, but during its life, it was converted to diesel. And on returning to here, it has been restored back to how it was when it was shipped out from the country in the first place. And also, it is the founder of Statfolds Barn's favorite locomotive. So if you ever see it out and about, he's sure to be nearby watching it go past. And it's not just locomotives that were built in the UK that we have in our collection. We have engines from all around the world, including this Davenport that was built in the US of A. Many railway enthusiasts will know of the Penryn quarries, at one point the largest slate mine in the entire world. And here at the Stadtfeld Barn, we have a collection of ex Penryn locomotives, some of them done up in the very distinctive livery. And having these engines back together again after so many years is an important cornerstone of our museum. As well as a good number of the traditional steam locomotive, we have some really strange and weird engines in the collection, like this Corpé made in France that features the weirdest motion that I've ever seen on a steam locomotive. Where it worked, there were lots of low down obstructions, so the cylinders were raised up so that they didn't hit them, which gives it this just weird design. We are very much a working museum, but it's not all just about preserving the past. The two locomotives either side of me are both new build engines being completed in 2005, showing what we can do with modern techniques to a much older design. Whilst the Stadtfold Barn Railway is renowned for its collection of steam locomotives, we also feature an impressive collection of internal combustion narrow gauge locomotives, as you can see lined up behind me. We are a constantly growing and evolving museum, acquiring new exhibits like the locomotive behind me. And this shows you the kind of quality of work that is carried out here. Most of the machines in this collection started like that and have been restored by countless hours of the staff and the volunteers that you see around you. Upstairs in the museum, we have this, a sectioned quarry hunslet, and this is a fantastic tool to help understand the inner workings of a steam locomotive. We can see the insides of the boiler, seeing the fire tubes where the hot gases heat it up, heating up water, creating steam, which travels up to the dome, along the passageways, down to the cylinders, and that creates motion, like this. This is a fantastic demonstration showing just how it works with the engine cut apart 
it will never work again. But this, this shows you just how it should and does operate. Next door, we have two more quarry hunslets, which were both fairly recently repatriated from North America. And these are not to be restored to run condition. More, these represent their working everyday condition, how these looked the day they finished service. They are complete with patches, scuffs, dents, to show us what your average everyday working steam engine looked like. The UK has a long and prestigious history of building locomotives, many of which were exported to all around the world. Many obviously stayed back home. And behind me, we can see the family tree of some of these great companies, many of the names that you will recognize, and then the subsequent companies which absorbed them as things grew, which all leads up to Hunslet, who own everything now below. They own the rights and the designs to all the previous companies. Adorning the walls up here are a collection of nameplates, most of them from locomotives that are no longer with us and some that you'll recognize from other engines in the museum. These are the originals. We keep replicas on the locomotives to stop them getting damaged or lost, as well as many works plates, again, from locomotives long since departed. It's just a very pretty thing to stand and look at and think of all these fine engines that once existed, and this is just a memory of what they once were. One of the single most important parts of the entire collection here at Statfold is the archive. Now, this isn't accessible to the general public. Requests can be made for particular items, but this area here holds all of the drawings that Hunslet themselves had. There is a huge wealth of information here of designs, blueprints, drawings, it's an easy way to lose a day just looking at the designs of locomotives from yesterday and parts components. This is an invaluable resource for anybody who owns a locomotive who may have some of these parts to be able to find the components to see the drawings of how it should have come together. And being here is absolutely amazing. One of the biggest challenges that faces the archive is preserving this for the future. You can see the condition of this particular drawing is deteriorating and that is just because of its age and the paper that they've used. So at the moment, they are undertaking the absolutely massive ordeal of digitizing all of these drawings. It will make it easier in the future to find what you're looking for, easier to send it out for people who require a particular drawing, but most importantly, it means it will survive and be there for the next generation to be able to view these drawings. And that brings us to the end of this look at the roundhouse here at the heart of the National Narrow Gauge Museum. So now enjoy some clips seeing some of our locomotives out in action, or perhaps go experience it for yourself with some of our train rides. And with that, have a great day here at the Statfold Barn Railway. <laughs>